Hi there, my name is Jessica Drossen and I create actions, textures, and overlays for photographers. Today I'm going to show you how I edited this image using my beautiful world actions and overlays. This is the after, this is the before, and now I'm going to show you the steps I took in this edit. So let's start with the white blown out sky. I'm going to go to my cloud import action here, and it's going to give me some prompts that are going to help me to bring this cloud overlay into place. So first of all, it's asking me to select the cloud overlay that I want to use. I already have it right here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it. I'm going to hit the play button again. Again, I hit stop. I'm going to go back to my original image as it prompts me to. Hit play again. Now it's telling me to use my magic wand tool. So there we go. And again, I hit play. And now it's going to tell me that I'm free to move my cloud image about. So let's just do that. I'm going to select my move tool, make sure that I have my cloud image selected, not the mask. And I'm just going to move it up. All of my cloud overlays have plenty of room so that you can position your clouds exactly where you want to in your image. And I think I like it about right there. All right. Now I'm going to do a little cleaning up on this. So I'm going to go into the mask itself. So I click on the mask using a white brush. I'm going to paint right on top of some of these trees. I'm in multiply mode, and so I can pretty quickly and easily just start covering them over. And it, that way you see the detail that's back there. These trees are kind of bokeh out, so they're a little hard to even tell that they're actually trees, but they are. There we go. Um, I'm going to also soften this background just a little bit. So now that I'm done with my cloud, I'm going to go into my brushes from Beautiful World Foundations, and I'm going to pick the Selective Blur brush. Again, I have white, an appropriately sized brush. I'm going to set it to about 50%, and I'm just going to blur my horizon line just a little bit. Now, if you notice, my horizon line is blurred but my clouds are still a little bit sharp. So I'm going to go into the cloud overlay actions. These are the bonus actions that are sold with cloud packs one through four. And what I'm going to do is soften my clouds a little bit. So I make sure that I have the clouds selected, not the mask, but the clouds themselves, and I'm gonna run soft clouds. Now my clouds suddenly got very dark. That's because it was in multiply mode. So what I'm going to do is turn off my original layer. And for the purposes of keeping things neat, I'm going to go ahead and throw it away. So now we have softer clouds. And again, I'm just going to go back into this mask just a hair. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to paint out a little bit of the mask right on the horizon line. Just to give the horizon a little bit of a soft glow and also to make it a little easier to not notice where my overlay and the original photograph are merging. All right, I think the next thing that I'm going to do for this particular image is to add a flare. I have a real flare going on in this photograph, but I'm going to accentuate it with an overlay. These overlays are from Beautiful World Cloud and Overlay Pack. There are also additional overlays that you can buy in the Force of Nature Light Effects Pack. That pack has a lot more light effects that you can choose from. So anyway, when you have a black overlay such as this, you want to put it into screen mode. And all of these are completely positionable. You could resize it to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to leave it just like this and put it right into that corner. I'm also going to add an additional flare called Rainbow Bright. Um, you kids that grew up in the 80s might have fun with that. 
And again, I'm going to put it into screen mode and just sort of position it where I like it. I'm going to put it right there on the windshield. And again, I could make it smaller if I chose to, but I think this will work for now. I can also reduce the opacity if I feel like it's a little bit too bright. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is add a vignette. I like to sort of start adding drama fairly early on. So I'm going to go here to the Beautiful World Vignettes Actions and I'm going to select the right diagonal vignette. And then I'm going to do just a quick little mask using the black brush. This vignette adds a lot of drama and then I can kind of go back in to my figure and remove any of the vignette that perhaps is making my subject too dark. So there we go. The next thing that I'm going to do is put in a little bit of saturation. So I go to the Beautiful World Foundation Saturation Actions and I think I'm going to use golden saturation. Here we go. I'm also going to adjust my shadows. I like to have cooler shadows in some of my shots, particularly to add just a little more color. So I'm going to go to Beautiful World Foundation's Tones, and I'm going to select Shadows Cool. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is concentrate on the color. I want to make this a little bit more artistic of an edit, so I'm going to go into my Vivid Tones and select Muse. It gives it sort of a warm richness. And then I'm going to go into Soft Tones and I'm going to select Ballerina. It gives it kind of a plummy warmth. I'm going to reduce that a little bit from the default, put it at about 30% instead. Now I think I'd like to add a little bit more detail. We've got some great detail going in with some of the texture that occurs naturally in the old barn and in the truck. So I'm going to play that up. To do that, I'm going to go into the Beautiful World Foundation's Definition Actions, and I'm going to select Black Detail Definition. There we go. I think for this, I'm going to give it a little bit of a matte. So I'm going here to the Beautiful World Matte and Haze set, and I'm going to select Flat Matte. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. I'm going to do one last little tweak. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight glow and I'm going to put it on top of this mat. So I'm going to go into the depth actions and select highlight glow. And I'm going to reduce that just a little bit. All right, now I'm pretty happy with this. I might just go ahead and add a little bit of texture. So go to the textures folder. Use off kilter here. Just grab it, drag it in. I'm going to put it actually in multiply mode. I'm going to lower the opacity way down. About right here. I'm going to make a quick mask. And now with a very large brush, I'm going to erase it out of these areas. There we go. Lastly, I'm just going to do a couple little detail moves. I'm going to go into brushes and I'm going to select the non destructive burn brush. I need to move it up because the selective blur brush must be right on top of the background. And now with white and a little smaller brush, I'm just going to go in. I had my opacity too high. If you do that though, I'll show you the quick fix.
you simply lower the opacity. All right. And then I'm going to also hit my non-destructive dodge. It's reminding me to lower my opacity, but I have it at 6%, which is fine. Again, I need to move that up over my selective blur. And I'm just going to paint in some of these areas that I want to have come forward just a little bit. So you can see it's subtle, but it kind of brings in a little bit of a three-dimensional effect. All right, let me show you again where we were and where we've come to. So here was the before, and now here we are with the after. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.